The last point is very crucial here. Uh, you now have Cheney admitting that he was one of the architects of waterboarding. Holder saying it's a violation of the torture statute, um, the anti-torture statute, and the torture convention saying there's an absolute obligation to begin a criminal investigation. As we sit here, uh, the Obama administration is in violation of the Convention Against Torture if it doesn't commence an investigation of Cheney, of Rumsfeld, and the others. So that, that that's point one. To me, the best argument, the best argument as to why you need criminal prosecutions is a picture you showed on this show of Obama signing the executive orders prohibiting torture. Because I look at that picture, and I love that picture, but I think of the next president who comes along who's going to sign executive orders going the other way. Our fundamental rights, the right against torture, uh, to be free from torture, should not be dependent on the length of the president's arm. The only real deterrence is prosecution. And I have to say that I, it has not made me pleased um, that over this period of the last few months, a number of groups are saying, well, for political efficacy, See, we can't get prosecutions. Let's go for something else, truth commissions or whatever. What we need now is a really strong statement uh, from the Scott, from people like Scott and others that say we need to open criminal investigations. Truth uh, and reconciliation commissions. That is what you called for. Are you changing your view now? No, I, I don't think it's a question of either or. I think that both of these things are necessary, in fact. Uh, and and the, the simple fact is that a prosecutor assembling a case to go after Bush administration officials is not focused on informing the public about what happened, and that's an essential function here. We need to have it. We need to know the truth about the last seven years, exactly what was done and on whose authority. And I think I think a blue ribbon panel is the best, best way to go about that. Uh, but I think, in fact, in the end of the day, when all those facts come out, that's only going to reinforce the prosecutor's hand by building public support for prosecutions. Kucinich, who is called certainly for impeachment, and there is also this issue, even of impeachment afterwards, that it has some relevance, uh, is calling for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I, I don't think truth. Truth, truth and Reconciliation, I we ought to get rid of that term. We ought to call it a uh, Commission of Inquiry or something like that. This is not Latin America. This is not South Africa. We have a democracy. We can go forward with something that's much more uh, robust than, than that. But I do think you can do them together, but you have to have a real commitment, a real commitment to prosecution. You can have, uh, let's get the facts out on the record, but you— So what you, would it look like? Like, what would the prosecution look like? You clearly have Obama wanting, saying he wants to move forward. There are all these issues. He wants bipartisanship. He's always pushing for that. How do you move forward with the prosecution? Who does it? You know, as much as I uh, welcome, obviously, in my office, those who represent Guantanamo det detainees, the efforts of the Obama administration to change a lot of the stuff that we've been litigating, I do find it difficult to hear him say we have to look forward and not backward, because to me, prosecutions look forward. They tell you you why we are not going to have uh, torture in the future, and so they are actually looking forward. So I find that to be uh, an odd, an odd statement. But how would they look like? Um, Scott and I have discussed this. We think a special prosecutor has to be appointed who can begin to open investigations, criminal investigations of what I would call the uh, the torture team broadly, but it's really members of the War Council who are the lawyers who actually uh, fabricated or made made these memos, fit them around the policy so torture could be carried out, and it's members of the Principals Committee. It's Cheney. It's Bush. Uh, it's, uh, it's Rumsfeld, it's Tennant. Uh, those are the, are the key people you'd focus on. Scott may have some additions. Uh, but you, you could do it with a special prosecutor here. Mm -hmm. the Truth Commission, the problem with it is if people just see it as gathering information, why not do it simultaneously? But part of it often in getting at the truth is granting immunity for people to tell the truth of what, what they did, so at least there is a history that is written. How do you get away from that, or how do you do that and prosecute at the same time? Scott Horton. That's going to be one of the complications. Here. I mean, I think we saw that with, uh, with Iran-Contra, for instance, when we had congressional probes uh, going on and we had uh, immunity deals worked out, and that was ultimately provided the basis for overturning some of the convictions that were uh, obtained. Um, it's a complication, but it doesn't mean you can't do both on parallel tracks. You just have to be very cautious about how you proceed. And the other question that, of course, with any kind of criminal, uh, I mean, a uh, commission of inquiry, is let's take a look at the CIA. The CIA uh, was running the secret sites where waterboarding took place and where 
if you read Jane Meyer's book, a, a vast amount of, of uh, torture and enhanced interrogation techniques. Even the Senate committee under Levin and McCain, the Armed Services Committee, when they came out with their recent executive summary, placing a lot of this at the feet of Rumsfeld, they could not get information from the CIA. Uh, one, of our, one of my concerns, certainly with a commission of inquiry, would be the CIA will just clam up like that. And yet you gave George Tennant the Medal of Freedom uh, for running these— I uh, <laughs> Not you, Amy, don't worry, I wouldn't <laughs> accuse you of that. Uh, but uh, you and the royal we, the president, whatever, um, gave, it, gave it to him. And, and how are you going to get at that at a, at a commission of inquiry? You're going to have trouble with it. A, a prosecutor is much more likely. And I do agree, the problems of running them sim simultaneously are the, the, the issues that Scott, Scott addresses. I don't think it's easy to solve. I, we obviously prefer a special prosecutor immediately, quickly, to look into this. I think it's, as I said, it's a legal obligation now uh, that the longer it continues will be the longer this administration is in violation of, of the Convention We've Against Torture. We've just got 30 seconds. I want to ask you about the Uyghurs, the ethnic uh, Muslims from Western China. 17 of them still hold at Guantanamo, others forcibly sent to uh, Albania. Um, the U.S. government says they are innocent. They have exonerated them. China is threatening. The Chinese government said on Thursday no country, uh, other country should not accept them, reiterated their long demand they be returned to China, um, where they would clearly be persecuted. What do you want to happen to them? Well, the court, it's, I'm not their lawyer. Well, the center is broadly the Guantanamo lawyers. The lawyer is Sabin Willett and a few other people out of Boston. Well, we just had on the other Right. Day. And, and the, there's a court order uh, from the district court that asked them to be brought into the United States. There was Uyghur families in Washington, D.C., who were willing to take them. Uh, that's on appeal now. My, my hopes is, although I don't want to speak for Sabin, is that, that uh, the stay on bringing them in gets lifted and they can be brought into the United States and given asylum in the United States. It may be they want to go to Canada or a different place. That they would have be applied, up, some of them, for so, so that, asylum so they in may, Canada. And, and that is what should happen. Obviously, uh, this administration is not going to send them back to China. I think that's a given. Um, even the last administration didn't send them back to China. So I don't the think that's going to happen. The question is why they're still in prison. They shouldn't be there. And and every and 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 when you look at when we look at a year to close down Guantanamo and people still sitting there who are, uh, according to the old administration, no longer enemy combatants but essentially innocent of anything, uh, they should be released forthwith. They've There's been no held issue. For almost eight years. Yes, yeah, they should be released forthwith. Michael There's Ratner, no thanks very much for being with us, President of the Center for Constitutional Rights and.